Melvin B, Emma, Melvin C, Victoria, get it. I've always believed in girl power. You better believe it! Girl power, equalization between the sexes. Mm. The film is self-parodying and the girls, you know, are very good at, you know, taking the mic out of themselves and having fun with the whole Spice Girls thing that's going on, the whole phenomenon. And they burst through that door right there. <laughs> Thank you very much. I've seen some Beatles films, really. I can't think of a single English film that's been made or a reason to make a film that seems so purely for the sort of the pop of it, the fun of it. Balloons, cake, sandwiches, fun. fun. It's all very tongue in cheek, and there is rea there is reality in there, but you know there's a sense of comedy with it. Hello. 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 It was not just like a, a sort of excuse for the Spice Girls to sing some songs. It's a really clever script and uh, a good laugh. Richard is one of the funniest people I've worked with ever. He's very funny. Ha, 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 ha. He came up to me and he said, thank you so much for letting me be in the film. And I was like, oh my God. Do you know what? That's Richard E. Grant, and he's thanking me for being in the film. And it was like, I was going, no, thank you for being in the film. Every morning we'd come in, you know, we'd come in with no makeup on, our hair down, and we're all knackered. We all come in with wet hair, no makeup. Richard just used to make us laugh all the time. He's going, no, thank you. And I'm going, no, thank you. He's very, you know, irate and mad and, you know, just brilliant. He's, that, he's a bit like his character, actually. Do you want me to go after the paparazzi chief? I could start kicking asses if you like. Stir things up a bit. Well, there's no need for any stirring. Put a couple of cats among a few pigeons. Leave the pigeons alone. Watch the feathers fly. Get some blood on the walls! Richard E. Grant, he plays like our manager. A slightly unhinged, neurotic, um, road straight manager. Look at that! More stories, more evil harpoons from the press. Oh! It's all lies, I tell you! Bring me a Richard E. Grant, who was playing Clifford, his character is, I just love it, it is fantastic. Clifford is neurotic, and I just think that's like, Clifford, chill out. Chill out, Clifford. <laughs> He's all irate and annoyed and uptight and frustrated with everything and anyone around him. He's neurotic, highly strong, out of control. He's manic. He's <laughs> really uptight. Uptight! He's not the head boss but he's like the middleman so you know it's always shoot the messenger basically so if anything goes wrong it's on his shoulders we've got this uh, character who is the chief yes between him and clifford they kind of run run things but they don't really because the girls always do what they want to do anyway which is why clifford starts getting mad going mad because he can't control them and in fact in real life no you can't control them anyway i'm going to stand up to the chief be assertive i'm going to ask him no Tell him the girls are going to have the morning off. The answer is no, Clifford. Chief? The girls cannot have the morning off. Of course not, Chief. The fact that they've been working really hard and they're at the point of exhaustion is... Irrelevant. Irrelevant. He has very little power and uh, gets stomped over by them. So let's go from the top again. OK. Chum, 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 chum. Coming downstairs. Bye, Clifford! No, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Where, where are you going? We're going home to sleep. We'll see you tomorrow afternoon. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. There's been a change of plan. The schedule's too tight. What? We've got the competition winners in the morning. Oh, God. Ah, nice one, Clifford. <laughs> you nearly had us there, Clifford. You're not really going to tell him fibs, are you? But it's basically our emotional punch bag. You know, if anything goes wrong, he gets it from both ends. You better watch it, mate. Yeah, and from mm. now on, no more Mr. Nice Spice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. But he's been a complete joy to work with, actually. Really good. Acting with Richard E. Grant is, like, unbelievable. And, and it's nice to have good actors like that it's around, sure. because you feel it sort of helps you and yeah. hopefully rubs onto you a bit. <laughs> Come on, boys! Capture that magic! 
I'm playing Piers Cuthbertson and Smythe, who's trying to make a documentary about the spices. Posh one, posh one, which one's uh, the one that the one that looks posh. Alan Cummings is he's <laughs> really funny. They do this scene, right? And um, he's got his little team around him and he's trying to catch us with his little documentary crew everywhere we go and it always goes wrong. There is a child in the water. Get that. I want a close-up of that wet. Yes, all I'm getting is you shouting. You shoot him. Because he is pretty dippy and his crew, the cameraman and the sound man, are like the worst you could ever wish to work with. Sound running. Excuse me, would you mind not filming, please? Cut. So it's not a recipe for success. We're on a boat trip and he's chugging along behind in his little crappy boat trying to get us and um, he goes overboard and the sound man goes but all I can hear is splashing man. In the film we wanted to show a lot of things that you know really do happen and paparazzi photography is, uh, is a, a bane of our lives is that the right expression they really are they're everywhere do you know what I mean and it's like I mean, we take it to the extreme in the film, which you'll see, but it's like you wonder when you go to bed at night whether there's one going to be hiding under your bed. Do you know what I mean? That is what they're like. They just seem to know where you're going to be and when you're going to be there. It's so bizarre. So we wanted to share that and we thought we want someone quite eerie, quite scary for that part. Richard O'Brien was perfect because he's a pretty spooky guy. Isn't he? 8.55, you in the lift, picking your nose, another bogey breakfast. Good. And now Emma is demonstrating how to deal with intrusive photographers. The rest is on to get out of the bathroom. The top is on. That's good! Do it again! Oh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I find that was very good. <laughs> it was quite funny. I was at home the day that the uh, one of the tabloid newspapers had a two-page spread on all the celebrities who'd been asked to take part in the Spice Girls movie. And uh, my name wasn't there. And secretly inside, I was weeping. I really need some great actors in the film. And I was thinking about, you know, Richard E. Grant. Jerry and Emma said, you are going to be in this film, aren't you? I said, yes, of course. So, um, you know, it's flattered that they even knew of my existence. Look at these fools taking part in this silly movie, yeah? There's no way I would do it if they asked me. I'm not even going to go and see it. I was too excited to think, actually, when I got this job. I'd been in a state of um, nervous flux for about two months. And then that very morning, I bumped into the director who said, would you like to be in the film? I said, Bob, I'd love to! That's the thing I find extraordinary. So uh, it shows you how deep I am, and I couldn't wait. I've been looking forward to it ever since then. But it is like my dream come true to work on this film. I bludgeoned my way into this. It does read a bit like a who's who, the cast list, but it's not meant to be a gimmicky thing. It's just that um, hopefully we've got the best people for the job. The people that we've chosen to work with us on the film have all been really down to earth and just complete fun. People who've been involved in the film up to now, the actors who've come in and done a day, or you know, people like Jules Holland or Roger Moore or um, Barry Humphreys, have loved it. We need a new angle, Brad. I mean, who cares if the Spice Girls get to number one yet again? Who cares if they climb to the top of Mount Everest on an ostrich? Or if they find a cure for deja vu. Not me. Or if they find a cure for deja vu. Not me. It's down to their in energy that, uh, that permeates the whole process of the film. When the rabbit of chaos is pursued by the ferret of disorder through the fields of anarchy, it is time to hang your pants on the hook of darkness. And we've learned something off everybody that's been on, on set. Down, down to the crew, down to all the celebrities that be, that's been in it. So it's one big, you know, bundle of learning experiences. We've got, you know, good actors who, you know, like Claire Rushbrook, say, from Six and Lies at one end, and we've got Barrymore, who we all know, you know, he's a very strong comedian, and you wouldn't necessarily expect to see them in the same film. It's five days in the life of five girls. Five girls, five lies. One story. Who are completely different um, in the way they look, in the way they act, and the way they, you know, just generally behave. Well, it's about five days in the life of the Spice Girls. But if they've changed it ever so slightly as I've come on. It's now about five days in the life of a, of a bus driver who happened to be driving these five girls. It's just, you know, it has nothing to do with them anymore. We're now changing the script, and it's now about my bus and, and uh, Dennis, the bus driver. My character is trying to cajole them and make sure that they're on time and that they turn up for this um, live performance. It's my job to see that you turn up. Five days in the life of us, working up to a big live performance at the end of it. I hate to interrupt, 
there's this small matter of an extremely live gig on Saturday. All right, we're coming. And uh, there are 5,000 screaming people of all ages there. <laughs> One of their best friends has got pregnant and is in the hospital having a baby. So, you know, I'd sort of go into cryogenic meltdown because I assume they're not going to turn up. So I know that my head's on the line and you know, the whole thing will collapse. Okay. So this is the plan. 